Hey everyone, Cody from Mac Telecom Networks. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the new Unify Network application 75.172. This, in my opinion, is probably the biggest update that I've seen for the Unify Network controller. There's a lot of fixes, improvements, and a couple new features. We're not going to be able to go through everything because the list is so long, but I will put a link down below to this update it is currently in release candidate if you'd like to hire me for network consulting visit my website at mactelecomnetworks.com i do have a discord server and affiliate links down in the description below now like i said this is still in release candidate so if you want to try this new network controller out you would have to go to your unify os and then go to the official channel and switch it to be on release candidate. After that, you could apply the changes. A new update should show under the network. Now, first we need to talk about the topology because this is really cool. You could see one of these computers, it looks like an Apple TV, which it really isn't. It's the computer that I'm currently on and that's why it's glowing like that. Another thing, they do live internet feeds. So if we go over here and click on display options, we could show all of our clients. I'm going to turn off my Wi-Fi clients. Now I've turned off my Wi-Fi clients. We could press this play button and it's going to show our internet traffic. And as you can see here, it's now showing our WAN connections as well. So we have multiple WANs. We have my WAN 1 and then we have my WAN 2. So Rogers and Bell. But then you could see this flow animation and where most of the data is going to, which is this computer. And I think it's a great new feature that they've added. Another thing they've added in the topology is for us to be able to test the latency to a client device, which is awesome. So I'm going to click on my Google Nest Hub and you would see right here, test latency. Let's click on that. And now we're clicking on test latency. It's going to go over a 60 second period and then tell us the spikes in latency that we have. So that's an awesome feature for troubleshooting. Another minor change, but it's a great quality of life feature is our ability to adjust the columns within the client list. So you could see here under the connection type and we could see my switches, but it's not giving us the full name. So now if we hover over, you could see this blue line and then we could extend that. I'm really glad they added that. That was one of my complaints with the client list. Another new feature within the client list is the ability to see six gigahertz clients. So if you have any of their enterprise access points that support six gigahertz, you could see that now. So I'm gonna turn off the 2.4 and the five, as well as the wired. Now on the bottom, you could see Mac Telecom and it's on two by two Wi-Fi six, but it's actually on the six gigahertz, which you could see under the channel. So six gigahertz at 160 megahertz. So that wasn't available before this update. One last thing with the client list is the last seen section. So you could add this in by doing the filter. We have never had that before. We always did have first seen. So this computer was first seen October 30th, 2022, and it was last seen August 26th, 2023, which is right now. Now, if we go over to Wi-Fi Insights, they have added in the AP density. So my AP density is good, but if you had too many clients connecting to the AP, it may show something different and you'd want to add more access points if needed. Now, another thing they've added is the ability to do speed test on our WAN 2. We've always been able to do it on WAN 1, but never on WAN 2. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to run that. Getting 1.6 down by about 750 up, which isn't correct. I'm going to have to call my ISP. I should be getting 3x3, three three, but it's great that we could do that right from the dashboard. Now, something minor that's needed to be done for a while is to add more options for the ESP DH groups within our site-to-site -site VPNs. When we're connecting to another firewall that's not ubiquity, we might have to have different options for our DH groups, and now they've added it in. Now, if we go to our devices, they've added filters for the device page. So we could click on the filter, we could show all devices, we could uncheck group by application, and then they're all just listed in a line. We could also do it by gateway switch, access point, cloud key, smart power, building to building, ULT, and non-ubiquity devices. A couple other things, they have deprecated the Facebook Wi-Fi authorization, which this was available a couple years ago, but Facebook is dropping support for it. So that's going to be completely gone. If you're using it before, you won't be able to use it now. They've also changed the RX and the TX error threshold in the system log. If you notice that you were getting a lot of those and it was saying maybe check your cabling, that's why the threshold was set too low. A few other UI changes, we can see that traffic routes looks different. Same with the static routes. And if we click on application firewall, 
it does look completely different. So we have our general tab and then we have our traffic rules. We also have our port forwarding and then we have our firewall rules. If we go under general, they now call threat detection suspicious activity, which I think was changed in the last update. There's a couple other updates in this new network controller that we can't currently use because it's in Unify OS 3.2. So it added support for DNS Shield. This requires a Unify next-gen gateway console to run on firmware version 3.2 or newer. And they finally added support for FQDN hostnames with IP site-to-site -site VPNs, which is a long asked for feature and hopefully we see 3.2 soon. If you're running IPv6, they've added IPv6 addresses for clients. This is still on Unify OS 3.2 and there's one more change that they made. So for IPv6, they've added stateless option in the internet setting. So if you are using that, that's something that you could look forward to in the future. Now, just by looking at this improvement list, you could tell that there is a whole bunch that I didn't go over. So you will want to read this if you'd like. They've also fixed a bunch of bugs. We could see the bug fixes and this is another long list. Now I am about to work on a 2023 full Unify build video. I've done a couple in the past, but if there's anything specific that you'd like to see in the video, leave it in the comments below. I was waiting for this new Unify network application to release, so you should see a video on that within the next week or two. If you have any questions about this video, please leave it in the comments below. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. If you're new here, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. All right, thanks.